Hello! Okay, this is my 50th video, and I thought I'd do something different for you guys, and that is show you my Blu-ray collection, uh, to date. It's not a massive collection, and it's nowhere near as big as what my DVD collection was, but I am, you know, in the process of building it up, there's so many films that I've yet to own on Blu-ray that I want to own, but, um... It's getting there, but it's not really that big, so I'm hoping this video won't actually be too long, and I'm going to quickly flick through them. I'm not really going to talk too much about them, because every single film that I'm going to show you here, I do hope to be reviewing at some point in the future. But I will also be including my the TV series that I own in my Blu-ray collection as well. So, um, let's get going. On a quick side note as well, I mean, one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this as well is, um... I think by showing things like this, uh, such as, you know, your film collection or, it, you know, it could be your music collection, I think you get you do get a little bit of an insight into that particular person. Um, I think you could, you could tell a lot about a person by showing, you know, by showing them what it is you've got in your film collection or, it, you know, your music collection and so on and so forth. And I think it's a good way of kind of, Get, you know, giving you guys a little bit of an insight to the sort of person that I that I am. I mean, perhaps that's just me, perhaps that's just my opinion, but um, I feel like you, you can tell a lot about a specific person by seeing what it is they actually own in, you know, it being film or music. So, here we go. Are we going to start with J.J. Abrams, Super 8. Love it. Uh... The very, very good uh, time travel movie, and one of the best time travel movies as far as I'm concerned. Looper, directed by Ryan Johnson. He directed episode 8. So if this is anything to go by, you know, it's quite pro it's looking quite promising. We have the X-Men, the Rogue, Cat. Um, I love this film, but I do think it was a little bit overrated. Uh, people went nuts over this. I I don't know. I It was good. I did really enjoy it, but this is not my favourite out of the uh, X-Men films. My favourite out of the X-Men films is actually First Class. I don't care what anyone says, but I absolutely adore this film. It's a great revenge story, and I, for me, it's just the best out of all the X-Men films. Ah, uh, Godzilla. Jurassic World. I think I've seen this a bit too, uh, too many times in the cinema, actually. But I do, I do really like Jurassic World. That was actually my top 10 um, lists of last year. I, I adore that film. Uh, the very good Wolverine. Uh, another film by J.J. Abrams. And that is the Star Trek reboot. Uh, really enjoyable film. Uh, I really like this. Um, this has kind of split a lot of Star Trek fans. Uh, very divided. But um, Star Trek Into Darkness. Um... I I did like I did really enjoy this and I did like it and it's a very big it's a massive cheese fest but it's a it's a very well done cheese fest and that is Independence Day I have done actually done a review of this already and I've done a review of the sequel which I was very very disappointed in um, this at least it was aware of itself but it was also done very well yeah it was cheesy but it the way this film was shot and everything I mean. This was a very well-made film for what it was, and then we had the sequel, which was I got amazing. Got to be honest, it was at the shit, and I was massively let down by the um, the sequel. But I have got my review up for that if anyone would like to check it out. The very fun and surprisingly good Kickass, the pointless uh, remake Robocop, but this was actually quite a decent remake. Not great, but not terrible either. But pointless. Rise of the Planet of the Apes, great film. Uh, X-Files, the first X-Files movie, Fight the Future, and the sequel, the sequel which belonged on TV, not in the cinema. Skyfall. Only God forgives, the first time I actually ever witnessed people walk out of the cinema. Daybreakers. Decent, okay, vampire movie. Uh, a masterpiece in the zombie genre. 28 Days Later, directed by Danny Boyle. An absolute masterpiece, this. 
Uh, the very, uh, very good um, monsters. I really, really do like this film. And directed by Gareth Edwards, who also directed Godzilla. And the heartbreaking uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. Adore this film. A film that I grew up watching from the ages of four or five, I think. Tim Burton's Batman. It's a lovely little set. This is the anniversary um, edition, I believe. And look at that. Ain't that just nice? Um, I love Jack Nicholson's Joker. And I, I did really, really like Michael Keaton's Batman. It's the, it's the Batman that I grew up watching. Uh, Dread blew me away. A very, very surprise in this. A very good film. If you haven't checked it out, do check it out. Uh, the Robocop trilogy. And then we've got the remastered version of Robocop. And this is the anniversary edition. Um, another film that I grew up watching. An absolute classic. And I do adore this film. Alien vs. AVP. Um... I would I wouldn't recommend them. I would actually recommend playing the PC games though. The PC games and um, the first two AVP one and two, uh, I highly recommend them. They're actually scary. These are not. Prometheus. Uh, Tron the the original Tron and then you've got the sequel Tron Legacy. James Cameron's Avatar. Uh, James Cameron being one of my uh, favorite movie directors of all time i really really do uh, adore that man i mean he's a director that i kind of uh, look up to and follow you could say and uh, um, he's one of those directors that i think are very inspirational to me and then we got the very uh, <laughs> um i bought this because i hadn't seen it in the cinema but i do like anything with vampires in and um, when it comes to classic monsters like the mummy or dra you know vampires or Frankenstein. Vampires are my favourite. So I had to buy this. And it's from the guy who brought us Daywatch and Nightwatch. And you know when it comes in you know, in terms of quality. This is completely different to his previous work. But um, it's okay for like you know if you're bored one night. And you're looking for something fun and stupid to watch. The Superman anthology set with 1, 2, 3 and 4 in. <clears throat> 1 and 2 being quite good. Uh, Danny Boyle's Sunshine, great soundtrack in this. Uh, one of my favourite films of all time, Zack Snyder's Watchmen. Again, another director I'm actually uh, quite a big fan of is Zack Snyder and his style of direction. And, um, but yeah, I absolutely adore this film and it did come out at the wrong time. Uh, Milk, Sean Penn is absolutely amazing in this film, portraying Harvey Milk. He's an absolute... He's an amazing actor, as uh, Sean Penn, and in this, he's absolutely brilliant. He blew me away. Uh, Philadelphia, with very young Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. Um, again, it's comes with a song by Bruce Springsteen that I really like. I think it's called Streets of Philadelphia, I think. Josh Trank's The Chronicle, or Chronicle even, not The Chronicle, but Chronicle. Very good film. Neil Blomkamp's uh, District Nine, uh, another one of my another one of my favourite directors, David Fincher. Absolutely, again, I adore that uh, that director and that man, and I, I just love his style. And he's got a very distinct style, David Fincher, and um, I just really really like the way he shoots his films and everything. But yeah, uh, Fight Club, an absolute classic. Uh, Duncan Jones's uh, Source Code. Um, quite a good film, this. I was actually shocked by this. I was expecting something like uh, Abraham Lincoln's Vampire Hunter. I, again, I hadn't seen this in the cinema like I, like I had not with Abraham, Abraham Lincoln's Vampire Hunter. So I went in expecting this to be a cheese fest and just crap, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, with a title like Cowboys and Aliens, I mean, you're not going to go in expecting, you know, something really, really, really great, are you? But I actually really, really like this. And this is actually a very well-made film. I don't understand a lot of the criticism this, that this has received. I mean, I really, really, really like this. I actually look forward to doing a review of this. Galmero del Toro's uh, kind of dark uh, fantasy fairy tale, uh, Pan's Labyrinth. I love this film. 
a uh, box set that I haven't I've yet to open, but it's Universal's Monsters, and that includes all the classic horror films like Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, The Bride of Frankenstein, and The Wolfman. I just haven't got time, I haven't got around to open it yet and watching them, but I will be soon. I'll probably do have reviews of all of them, uh, ready for Halloween actually, but yeah, this comes into a nice little set. We have Terminator Salvation. Actually better than the third film this, I felt. Uh, Elysium, Neil Blomkamp's second film, I believe this is. The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey in 3D. I don't know why it's in 3D, because I do not own a 3D Blu-ray player, and I do, I'm not a massive fan of 3D. And then we've got the sequel, The Desolation of Smaug, The Hobbit, and a uh, kind of very nice holographic cover there. This, this is a fi these these films I got cold really close to my heart. They are films that I grew up with watching, and I mean, I think mean everyone, anyone who loves film and who loves science fiction and storytelling, I mean, they they gotta love these films, and um, and that is Star Wars. I mean, these are classics, and like I said, I grew up watching them, and they made me fall in love with film and sit, you know, in cinema. And actually, filmmaking, I mean, these are the films that kind of really made me want to go and want to make film. Um, a lovely little box set, this. And do you know what? I actually don't mind the prequels. Uh, in fact, I actually like the prequels. I do, I do, um, I can see why people don't like them. And I will, hopefully I'll be doing reviews of all of these very soon. But the prequels, I... I can't say I hate them like a lot of Star Wars fans do. Uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens, J.J. Abrams, you know, well done. You did a great job with this. Bram Stoker's Dracula, Gary Oldman, another actor that I love and I adore. He's a, such a great actor and I absolutely loved him in this play in Dracula. The Dark Knight of Batman Begins in a box set. Uh, one of many multiple versions that I own of these films. The Thing and his prequel. Uh, the X-Men quadrilogy. So we got X-Men, X-Men 2, The Last Stand and the X-Men Origins Wolverine. Ugh. Before I continue, um, also you'll, you'll probably see or notice a lot of questionable um, films that I own. Uh, most of them will, prob will be sequels. Um, one of the reasons is I'm a completist and I'm a collector. I have to own them all. It's like the Terminator franchise. Uh, I love Terminator 1, 2, but I will own 3, 4 and 5 because then I, you know, it's complete. The collection is complete. So, um, just a quick side note there. Okay, uh, so, talk about Terminator. I'll be back. Terminator, absolute classic. Grew up watching this. Uh... Paranormal Activity, um, I'm not a massive fan of found footage films, but this, I really, really, really like this, and it creeped the hell out of me, and it actually made me want to, well, I did have to put the lights on in the house in the last 10, hours. I think it was the last 20, 10, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, I had to put the lights on, because this scared the life out of me, but I haven't actually seen the sequels, or I think I might have seen the second one in the cinema, and I was actually quite impressed, but I can't remember... Uh, Duncan Jones's Moon, love this film. Splice, if you're a fan of species, you'll, um, you'll like this, I feel, or oh, I think. Um, I, I really like this. Schwarzenegger, again, in Total Recall. Uh, Terminator 3, uh, it's okay. Terminator 2, one of the greatest films ever made and one of the greatest sequels ever made, as far as I'm concerned. Adore this film. The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I actually liked the rebooted uh, Spider-Man films. V for Vendetta, another one of my favourite um, movies of all time, up there with Watchmen and the Dark Knight trilogy. Love this film. E.T., a classic by Spielberg, Steven Spielberg, and I'm a director I'm a massive fan of, and um, this makes me cry every single bloody time. Hellboy, good film. And here we go again, uh, The Batman Begins, 
This is one of my many uh, duplicates that I have. But these are the Steelbook editions. Very nice Steelbook um, editions, actually. So there's Batman Begins and then The Incredible The Dark Knight. And the absolute epic and what I thought was very emotional climax. And as The Dark Knight rises. The Incredible Hulk. Um, I actually preferred the look of the Hulk in this film than I did with the Hulk that was in Avengers and um, the Avengers, uh, the, se the sequel. Um, I just really, really preferred the look of the Hulk in this. I mean, he's slightly different than what they made him look like in Avengers, I feel. Maybe it's just me, but um, I think they made him look a bit more comic-y. Whereas in this, he just felt and looked more real to me. Perhaps that's just my opinion. Um... um but I just like the way like his muscle you could see its muscles stretching and it just looked more real. Whereas the one in Avengers, um they just made him they when they changed the design slightly, they just made it a bit more comic book looking. So it didn't really for me it, didn't, it just looked cartoony. But um I'm not that's not me knocking the Avengers films or anything. But um I just preferred the look of this Hulk. And the first four. Yet to own the sequel, I did actually like the sequel. Again, I got other duplicates here. I actually own these in another box set as well. But I just had to get this because this came down on price. I think it was Amazon. And um, and that's the Alien the Alien set. So you've got Alien, Aliens, Alien Free, and Alien Resurrection in there. And this actually lights up as well. There we go. It lights up. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Things, you know, pleases me anyway. But, um... Yeah, that's a, it's a very nice looking, uh, it's just plastic it is, but no, I do really, really like it. And I love the films, again, they're films that I grew up watching, and they're films that um just made me fall in love with cinema. And I'm going to admit, I actually like Alien 3. I'm actually quite a big fan of Alien 3. So one day when I eventually do reviews of those films, I, I, I can't wait to get my sort of review and my opinion across on that particular film. And we got... Man of Steel, what I think is a massively underrated film and a very misunderstood film. Now, this wasn't cri this wasn't a critical disaster. Um, I think it's like something like fifty odd percent. I think it's like fifty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. But um, I loved this film. I really, really. I mean, I, words can't describe how much I did actually love this film. And um, this was one of my, this was. I didn't actually do a top 10 list for that year because I wasn't doing videos then. But this would have been in my top 10 list of movies. I think it was 2013. Yeah, this would have been in my top 10 um, films of 2013. I just think it was a very misunderstood film. But I, I just loved, I just really, really loved this film. Again, I love Zack Snyder and the way, you know, I love his style of direction. But I just, you know, this is a film I hold quite close to my heart and I can't wait again. To do you know to do a review of this at some point in the future, uh, I got a couple of films coming up that I've still got in the wrap and I just haven't got around to opening them and watching them yet. But that one is uh, Brokeback Mountain. I have seen this very good film. Heath the late Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. Hall. I think that's how you pronounce his surname. But yeah, Gotham season one. Um, I really enjoyed this. It's not perfect, and there were things that I it wasn't particularly. A massive fan of in it but um yeah definitely worth a check this i'm currently watching season two actually really really enjoying season two i think season two by far so far anyway is a it's quite better it's a lot better than um than this season then we've got the batman it's the animated um this is the dc animated movie batman the dark knight returns based off frank miller's uh, Dark Knight Returns comic, and this is really, really good. I, uh, Rosemary's Baby. I've only seen this recently, and that was last year. We um we went to Toronto. Uh, it was last uh, last December, and this was on the plane going to Toronto. And I'd never seen it, but I'd heard about it because apparently this film uh, was inspired George Lucas a lot. And there were certain scenes in Revenge of the Sith that was actually influenced. By this film apparently so I thought oh, I'll check it out it's a really 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 good film uh, another one of David Fincher's classic films and that's seven great film and then we got part two of Batman the Dark Knight Returns Batman v Superman on 4k I bought this on 4k originally because 
it comes with the Blu-ray, and I don't obviously I don't own a 4K player yet, and um, there's no way I could be able to afford a 4K player anytime soon. But this comes with a Blu-ray, so I assume the extended version would be on the Blu-ray. It wasn't. It was only on the 4K version. So I felt a little bit betrayed there. But um, so what I did was I bought it on Blu-ray just so I could watch the extended version. And then, this is not in any particular order, mind, by the way. And this is actually quite... I can't. I didn't realise how messy this order is. So I do apologise for that. But we've got... We're jumping straight into Star Trek Season 3, the original trilogy in Blu-ray. Um, I do quite enjoy watching these. They are quite funny because of, you know, the times they were made and the fact that the budgets weren't exactly that large. And you could just tell a lot of the scenery is um, cardboard. Though they do fix a lot of that in these remastered versions. Uh, by adding a lot of CGI. And then we've got Star Trek, the first season, and The Next Generation. And um, I'm actually looking at buying the box set of this, actually. I know I've already got the first season, but the box set have come down quite a bit in price. So I'll probably end up getting that. Star Trek, season one, Blu-ray. <clears throat> Star Trek, season two, Blu-ray. Got True Blood. This is the fourth season. There, and then we have True Blood, third season. True Blood, second season, and then we've got the first season. Um, I haven't finished watching True Blood actually. Missed a couple of seasons there, but uh, I do absolutely love True Blood. Sucky. Okay. Sorry, I just had to do it. Uh, I quickly move on to the big bad boys that I've got, and this is Farscape. A uh, very nice set that is. We've got the 30th anniversary of James Bond Blu-ray set. Beautiful set this is. And I absolutely love the character James Bond. I think I've owned the um, Bond collection on every single format. We've got the Indiana Jones complete collection. 1, 2, 3 and 4. I do actually like Crystal Skull. And we've got Blade Runner, the 30th anniversary, um, and with all the different cuts in there. That's a quite another quite nice set for that. And I'm going to have to get up and actually show you this one, because this one's quite big and it's quite heavy. But it's the complete Harry Potter. And then there we go, and that's the complete Harry Potter set there. A really, really nice set, this. Um, every single film in there. Uh, we got again the alien box set, but this is in a standard sort of form, a standard release, and uh, we got again films I grew up with, Jurassic Park as the collections. You've got the Lost World and Jurassic Park three in there. You got Star Wars, the Clone Wars. There's the first four seasons in there. Um, if you haven't seen, if you're a massive Star Wars fan and you haven't seen these yet. Please do, because they're absolutely amazing. Then there's the Star Wars, <coughs> the complete season 5. Uh, the Lost Missions. I, act I actually bought this in Toronto, because to at the time, to import this over here to the UK was really, really expensive. So it was cheaper to for me to get it in Toronto. But yeah, the Lost Missions. Uh, these get incredibly dark. And we got Star Wars Rebels. Um, when it comes to the animation, I'm not that big a fan of it. Um, I prefer what they did with uh, the Clone Wars, but I do actually like this series, and this first season is quite good. Uh, we got another one. Uh, we got a, one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Battlestar Galactica. They've just re-released this in a new, a brand new set, which includes everything and all the other like um, straight to TV films. Uh, so I'm looking. For, I'm keeping my eye on that because at the moment it's a bit too expensive. We've got the Iron Man 3 movie collection. Uh, my favourite actually being Iron Man 3. I know a lot of people actually don't like that one. But I actually really, really like Iron Man 3. Uh, the Predator trilogy. Get to the chopper! Uh, that's my very, very lame Schwarzenegger impression. I don't think I'll be doing many of them. But yeah, I uh, love the Predator movies. Grew up watching them. Again, I seem to like all the ones that everyone else, uh, the fans, didn't like. And I do actually really like Predator too. And I also really like Predators. And then we've got the Lord of the Rings uh, Extended Edition. This is with all three films in there. Absolutely adore the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And I always prefer the extended versions and the director's cuts. Because to me, they are the, you know, they are the d definitive 
version, they're the version that we should be watching. If a director wants to release an extended version, I'm all for it because, you know, at the end, it fleshes out more the story, it fleshes out more characters, and I prefer the longer versions. You know, don't worry about the stupid, especially when it comes to these films, don't worry about the stupid three-hour versions. Go for the five-hour versions. We're in the final stretch now, so please bear with me, and for those that have actually stuck this out into this long, I commend you. Um, here we go, we go. Again, another one of my favourite TV shows of all time, and that is The X-Files. Um, I can can't tell you how hard it was to actually get this. Um, I did wait for a while for it to come down in price, but yeah, I absolutely adore this show. No one of the great, it's only one of the greatest science fiction TV shows ever, but it's also one of the greatest love stories ever as well. And I never duplicate, but again, I, I own the Dark Knight trilogy again, but in this very, uh, very nice collector's set. Um, these films do mean an awful lot to me, and I've seen these films quite a bit in the cinema. I, I absolutely adore these films, as you could probably guess. I own them, I think it's three or four different um, versions now of these uh, films, but um, I absolutely adore these films, and it's a very nice set, this. Ah. Uh, Again, Dark Knight Rises, and uh, I had to buy this when it first came out, but there's this cowl there, and it needs a bit of a dust as well by the looks of it, but yeah, that's a really, really nice, I like that image, they use this image a lot in the posters as well, and I really liked it. And um, we have got, and this is the last one, um, this is my very last Blu-ray that I've got at the moment, and that is the Tar uh, Tarantino box set, and it doesn't, it doesn't have all his films in this, it's only up to a certain date um this is approved by quentin tarantino and it's a 10 disc set and it does inglorious bastards pulp fiction kill bill volume one volume two reservoir dogs jackie brown true romance and death proof so it doesn't have the hateful eight and django unchained i don't think there's any of us i'm missing but they're, they're the two they don't have I, I love those films and i i love a majority of tarantino's work i mean i really like his style uh, he's, he's really quirky and he's not afraid to push boundaries, Tarantino. And that's what I really like about him. And that's it. Uh, thank you for sticking, sticking it out for those who, who have. Um, but that my Blu-ray collection isn't actually as big as my DVD collection was. But like I said, I'm still still so many that I want to get and that I want to own. And um didn't realise there's so many that I actually still have yet to own. I mean, there's so many of Spielberg's uh, films that I've yet to own on Blu-ray. But um, I'm getting there. So, yeah, and hopefully at some point I will do an updated video uh, of my Blu-ray collection. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I mean, um, I hope you found that a little bit insightful, maybe. Um, I'm hoping to, I am hoping to do a review of every single film that I've just showed you in the future. And I will be calling um I'll be calling them retro reviews. But I actually plan on doing TV reviews very soon as well, and I'm thinking about going and uh, doing game uh, game reviews because I am I'm a, I'm a big gamer. I'm not as big as I used to be, but I still enjoy playing uh, video games. And I own an Xbox One, and when I've got a couple of minutes, you know, spare minutes, I do like to play on it quite a bit. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe and. Please feel free to leave a comment below um, if there was anything, you know, in my collection that you found very, very questionable, you know, let me know below. So, yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I've got two reviews coming up next, and they are for Lights Out and Morgan. So, yeah, thank you, everyone, for watching, and I'll be back.